The mysterious death of Elisa Lam, which took place in 2013, was an event that attracted the attention of millions all over the world and was the subject of various documentaries. Although it has been a long time since the young woman's body was found in a water tank, now we will inspect the most interesting details of the incident and the most likely theories. I am Burke Atlas, and a new mysterious story begins. Although the mystery of Elisa Lam's murder was tried to be solved many times, no one could explain the incident that took place in 2013, and these strange behaviors exhibited by the woman in the elevator could not be understood in any way. Although the incident took place recently, even today's technology could not solve this murder, and that is why Elisa Lam's story has attracted great attention. It all starts with the fact that the taste of water becomes strange. All these events begin on January 26, 2013. Elisa Lam, who was visiting Los Angeles as a Canadian tourist, was staying at the Cecil Hotel, located on a busy street in the city. Elisa was last seen on February 1st, and about a week later, other guests staying at the hotel complained to the hotel management that the water tasted bad and the pressure was also quite low. The authorities, who wanted to solve the situation, sought a remedy by checking the water tank and as soon as they opened the water tank, which is about 1.5 meters wide and 2.5 meters high, they were faced with a terrible sight. A naked body was floating in the water tank, and it was soon revealed that the body belonged to 21-year-old Elisa Lam, who was staying at the hotel. Immediately after the discovery of the body, of course, a large-scale investigation was launched. The first thing that was examined was the CCTV recordings of the Cecil Hotel. The last images of Elisa Lam were caught on a security camera located in an elevator, and because of Elisa's strange behavior in the elevator, these images have been viewed millions of times around the world. As a result of the investigation showed, an interesting detail comes to light. When Elisa Lam first checked into the hotel, she preferred to stay in a room with a shared area, then switched to a personal room because of the strange behavior of her roommate. Although the authorities said that Elisa was under the influence of alcohol or some drugs that would make her hallucinate the strange behavior she exhibited in the elevator, no foreign substances were found in Elisa's blood during the tests performed at the autopsy. As such, it is believed that Elisa was murdered, but again, the autopsy report says that there were no signs of trauma anywhere on her body, not even scars. Meanwhile, some research was being done about the young woman's past, and it turns out that Elisa has bipolar disorder disease. As in every unsolved case, it is believed that Elisa committed suicide. There is only one option left. Suicide. Many people already think the same thing, namely that Elisa committed suicide without leaving any notes behind. Perhaps you may think so too, but after seeing the reasons that I will list in a moment, you will see why it would be unlikely that the woman had committed suicide. First of all, there are two ways that Elisa can access the water tank located in the attic. The first of these is the fire escape, which he will reach by exiting the window of the room, and the other is the door that opens to the roof, where alarms go off when trying to open without a key. In addition to going to such trouble to commit suicide, if Elisa tried to climb the fire escape through the glass, either someone from the outside would see, or the hotel management would know about it when the door alarms went off. Let's say Elisa somehow managed to get to the roof. First, she had to open and lift the tank lid, which weighed 10 kilograms and then miraculously close the lid back after jumping into the tank. The police cannot definitively call the incident a murder or suicide, and the death report says accidental drowning, but considering all these circumstances, we think it is very unlikely that Elisa committed suicide. Elisa's case is never solved, but interesting and creepy theories are thrown out. Theory 1. Elisa was killed by supernatural beings. Now when we look at the images of Elisa taken in the elevator, the first thing that comes to mind is who is the girl talking to here? Something in the style of repentance is happening. Because there is no one on camera but Elisa, the girl is very scared of someone or something, trying to run away. To me, the simplest way to seem to have solved such unsolvable things is to link the incident directly to supernatural beings. Is the girl seeing someone invisible? For sure, it's a ghost or some kind of interpretation. It's a direct escape. There are even those who take the business to a more advanced level. A serial killer named Richard Ramirez, who stayed at the Cecil Hotel from 1984 to 1985, kills exactly 13 people and is sentenced to death after being caught. A group that loves urban legends very much thinks that Richard's ghost killed Elisa. The funny thing is that Richard Ramirez never goes to the Cecil Hotel. 
Another element that reveals the theory of supernatural existence is that something strange happened to Elise's hands, as you can see between deck 2 o'clock and 2.20 seconds of the video. It remains for the young woman to explain her strange actions in the elevator. As I mentioned earlier, it was stated that Elisa was dealing with the problem of bipolar disorder. Although bipolar disorder seems like a cool disorder that everyone has in popular culture, it can get to very serious levels and if you don't take your medications, you can turn into a completely different person than you've ever been. The autopsy showed that Elisa had less medication in her blood than she should have, and according to her sister's statement, Elisa's attacks had started to increase recently. Theory 2. Elisa got involved in the deadly elevator game. Many of us have heard about the blue whale game that leads children to fatal consequences. There are such games aimed not only at children, but also at adults, and it is believed that Elisa may have played this game, which was originally formed in South Korea. The game does nothing but drive people to death by convincing them that they will move to the other dimension. People who want to play this game are asked to take the elevator in a building with at least 10 floors alone first. The person who plays the game first is 4. He needs to press the fold, then the 2nd, 6th, 10th and 5th buttons. At this time, he should not go down on any floor either. It is said that after reaching the 5th floor, an unseen woman will get into the elevator, but this woman should not be looked at or spoken to in any way. In the end, players are asked to press the button for the 1st floor, and if the elevator starts to go down, the player is asked to get out of the elevator immediately and leave the hotel without looking back, as this indicates that the game does not work. If the elevator is 10, and if he goes to the floor, it means that the task is completed and the player has passed into another dimension. 1. Waiting for the elevator to go up when the floor button is pressed. Now it is quite clear that the purpose of the person who wrote this game was both to disrupt elevators and to try to kill people, but it is also a fact that someone who does not feel well psychologically can fall for such games in some way. But since he does not prove anything in this theory, he agrees with hollow theories. Theory 3. Elisa was subjected to a secret tuberculosis test. According to some claims made, at the time of Elisa's death, or murder, tuberculosis disease had gone through the roof in some parts of Los Angeles, and some clinics were conducting secret laboratory experiments for this disease. Rumor has it that Elisa was also a part of the experiment, and interestingly, the name of the test is generated for TB Lam Elisa, Elisa Lam with the name of the test that is similar, so it's amazing, and some people have been killed and the young woman says that learned too much so. These are the strongest theories put forward. Let's take a look at the most commonly used suicide methods and the forms of death that people are most afraid of today. Usually, people who are trying to commit suicide either take an overdose of drugs, get a bullet in the head or try to hang themselves. I don't think even people who risk dying will want to die in pain. However, forms of death such as drowning, burning, or dying by being exposed to pain for a long time are also among the things that people are most afraid of and Elisa's autopsy report also says that she died by drowning. Among these theories, the theory that I believe to be the most likely to be true, I think, will be the secret tuberculosis experiments. Deck. People who are somehow connected with the higher authorities, of course, do not want it to be shared with the public when something goes wrong. Perhaps Elisa was killed because she knew too much about the experiments and the elevator recordings, which were completely independent of the girl's murder and directly related to bipolar disorder, were also published to cover up the incident and make people say, look, she's talking to a ghost. If the elevator records hadn't come out, everyone would have been sure that this incident was a murder, and the arrows could have been pointed somehow at the clinic that conducted these tests. However, these images, which could not be given any meaning, turned the incident into science fiction by distancing it from the murder.